Hey guys, and welcome to another Paranormal Q&A video. In this video, I try to answer as many of your questions as I can in as much detail as possible, but I get so many questions every day that I just can't answer them all. So if I don't get to your question in this video, don't worry, I might get to it in the next one. If not, just drop it down in the comments and I'll answer it as soon as I can. So without further ado, let's jump into the first question. Christian asks, my question is, when did you stop being afraid of those entities? So it's kind of difficult to narrow it down to a specific point. It's not like, it's, it's not really an overnight thing. It's not like I woke up one day and this stuff just didn't scare me anymore. Like things still scare me now, but it's, it's very much been a process. Like years and years of being surrounded by this stuff has sort of desensitized me to it. Like that's, that's the reason it doesn't frighten me. And you can ask a lot of paranormal investigators, they feel the same. Like at first it's, it's really frightening, but the more and more you do it, the more you realize that it's, it's not quite as scary as it initially seems. And if I was to try and narrow that down to a specific point of my haunting where it just it stopped being as scary, I would say it's a couple of years ago, I went through a phase where I was doing a lot of different experiments. I was buying lots of equipment and testing things out. And I think through that and realizing that there were no major negative repercussions or anything, like I never at any point felt like I was, I was in danger. I think over that process of experimenting, I started to realize that this 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 just isn't as scary as it once was like watching these results appear like using a k2 meter and seeing right in front of your face that this thing's like no something is there nothing bad's happened like i think it it, it was during that time that it, it really started to make sense to me that it, it's not as scary as it once was so yeah i think i think about two years ago olivia asks do you believe in myths such as the midnight man bloody mary or lady in black the dark ghosts no, I don't really put a great deal of stock into myths and legends and things like that, especially things like Bloody Mary that is essentially just a game designed to frighten people. I'm, I'm sure that once upon a time it was based on something very real, like maybe there was a Bloody Mary that died and, you know, under tragic circumstances and people started telling the story and then over time that became the fact that you could summon her and then it became the mirrors and so on and so forth and then maybe one day someone played it and an actual tragedy occurred and then because the human brain works in cause and effect we like to have a reason for things happening they saw the tragedy put it down to the fact that she'd played this game and the story continues and it just it gets blown way out of proportion and it becomes the bloody mary that we know today like personally that's what i believe um but at the same time i'm not really going to go out my way to play it i try to avoid things that like the charlie charlie game that happened for for a while like i never saw the reasoning behind it like yeah great let's play this game and it's really scary but you're putting yourself in a position where you're intentionally trying to summon something whether i believe it's real or not i'm not going to go out of my way to do that just in case it turns out it is like i i would just be unlucky enough that that would happen so um no i don't really put much stock in it but at the same time i wouldn't advise playing these things too much just because you, you never really know Rachel asks, Hey Michael, do you think that when we all die, we will be able to come back and visit our loved ones that are still around? Or do you think that only those that die and have unfinished business hang around? I don't think we necessarily have a great deal of choice in the matter of whether we become spirits or we can come back and visit loved ones, etc. I know, I know that sounds bleak, but personally, I think ghosts are just energy that hasn't quite gone through the stages correctly so at the moment of death there has been some kind of anomaly that causes the energy to stick around i think the energy that sticks around is holds that intelligence and so at the moment of death say if somebody has a lot of unfinished business their mind is so active at the time of the death because they've got things that they, they, they should have done and they regrets whatever that that stops the energy from dispersing the way it should and so you kind of get this free form energy as it were and that for me is what i believe a ghost is now it's a working theory i'm not saying it's correct it's just it's something that i believe in at the moment i might i might prove myself wrong later down the line and i hope somebody proves me wrong because that just keeps the whole thing fresh and interesting but that that's what i'm working on and i think it's it very much depends on the the circumstances of the death if it was tragic then the mind hasn't accepted death. It's not ready for it. And so you get that same kind of anomaly. I don't think it happens to everybody. I think it, it's it's very much a case-to-case -case basis. Mr. Bat asks, How can you be an atheist when you have felt demonic paranormal activity that's out of this world, 
That alone should ring a bell in your mind that if there are demons, then there are angels. And if there are angels, then there is a God. Now, I want to be very clear, like, I accept everybody's opinions and beliefs, especially when it comes to things like the paranormal, because it's such an open book. Everybody's still learning. I don't think there are any right answers, only people's opinions and theories. And so, for me, the reason I'm not religious is because I've not had my bit of evidence that tells me that God or any type of divine entity exists. Like, I've had evidence of ghosts, but I've just not had my moment as far as religion goes. I don't think the two have to be related. And I accept what you're saying about if demons exist and angels exist and then God, etc. But when you hear me referring to demons, I'm not referring to the typical, you know, Satan's minions, like work of the devil type demons. I personally think demons are just another form of paranormal entity, like a, a kind of a paranormal parasite, as it were. They just happen to feed on people. We happen to be the prey for that particular type of entity and they just they absorb our energy where ghosts can use like em pumps and different electronic devices demons are said not to really need that and i think that's because they draw their energies from us we hear about possessions i think that's just the parasite latching onto a host and and drawing the energy away i actually i made a reference to a parasite that works in a similar way in our own ecosystem uh, on a previous q and I'll, I'll link to it in the description. It's, it's definitely worth a watch. I really go into my theory of demons in a little bit more detail, but that's 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 what I think of them. I just think they're another type of entity. I don't think it's necessarily related to the fact that there is a, a devil or a god. I just think they're a standalone thing. Benjamin asks, and here's the question. Finding out a couple of months ago that I am a sensitive, how would you go about advancing your abilities, like fine-tuning them, and how can you find out what else you can do? That's a good question. Like around here, there are things like spiritualist churches where mediums and psychics, they gather and, you know what I mean, hone the skills in. They have like beginner circles and things like that. So if, if people that feel that they're sensitive or have some kind of latent abilities, then they can go to these places and try and hone them in. If, if you've had some experience that has told you that you are definitely a sensitive, I think it's worth checking one of these places out. See if you've got one near you or any kind of gathering of mediums and psychics i'm sure they have different names for them everywhere but um i think i think it's worth going i think as far as learning what you can do and if you have any other types of abilities that kind of environment is the perfect place to find out because you're surrounded by like-minded people that they have their own abilities and you, you'll you very soon find out whether you can or can't do it kelly asks michael a couple of videos back during the q a your right screen had an image appear what was that now, I know it's difficult, but you really do have to just ignore what's going on on this computer screen. Like, I have this nice screensaver for the Q&As, but Windows is a bit rubbish, so it will often pop up with things that I don't want it to. Like, you'll often see in this bottom corner, it, a little window pops up, and then the whole start menu appears, and it's just telling me I need to update, and for some reason, it feels the need to get rid of my screensaver to do that. It's very frustrating. This thing that you saw on the screen a couple of Q&As ago was just... It was a clip from an upcoming video because I was rendering it at the time I was doing the q and I was trying to squeeze it in. And so I clicked on render, got this up and started reading the questions and it, it just happened to pop up while I was answering. It wasn't anything paranormal. It's just the PC being a bit rubbish. Gala asks, is it possible that we can live with them without any harm? Oh, definitely. I don't think just because your house is haunted that you are suddenly at risk of like any health problems or anything like that, unless it's a particularly negative entity that that drawing on your energy all the time i think it's perfectly possible to just cohabitate i mean this house is prime example spirits just are they're, they're just there they're not out to draw your energy all the time it's only when you're really actively investigating them you're asking them to do things they just draw the closest energy to them which tends to be the person asking all the questions which is a fair trade you want them to do something then your energy is kind of on the table as an offering and so like here, it's not like I come home and I just suddenly feel really drained and lethargic because the spirits just want all my energy. It's only when I'm actively going at it and I'm asking them to do things that I start feeling that way. I mean, it depends on the activity of your house, I guess, as well, to be honest. Like, you get some haunted houses that you might hear footsteps maybe once a year at a push. And in that kind of environment, you're not going to notice the difference. You're really not going to feel it. You know what I mean? They're obviously not drawing on your energy actively. They're not going to cause you any problems. I think it's just, they're just there. And I think it's it's perfectly possible that 
once they're a part of that environment and at least if, you, if you're used to it and it doesn't scare you that they're there, then I say go for it. Why, why worry about it? And so that's it for this week's Q&A, guys. I hope I answered your questions sufficiently and in enough detail. As I said before, if I didn't get to your question in this video, don't worry. I might get to it in the next one. If not, just drop it down in the comments and I'll answer it as soon as I can. So thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I'll post any and all activity as and when I get it.